the last thing we got to show you guys is what is called harmonics. Harmonics are simply different resonance frequencies of a standing wave. And the harmonic number N. can be found by the number of antinodes. So I'm going to show you a bunch of harmonics. Uh, and the first harmonic with n equals 1 is called the fundamental. Fundamental is simply the first harmonic or the n equals 1. This is called the n equals 1 or the fundamental. Uh, how many antinodes does this have? One antinode. That's why n, the harmonic number, is 1. Let's take a look at the second harmonic. How many antinodes does this have? Two antinodes. This is the second harmonic. N equals what for this? N equals two. Let's try the third harmonic. And there are how many antinodes on this? Three antinodes. How many nodes are there? Notice there's one, two, three, four nodes. So don't count nodes for these. You're going to count antinodes to figure out the harmonic number. Here's the live version of that demonstration. Here's the first harmonic, or the fundamental. Here's the second harmonic. The third harmonic. And the fourth harmonic. Harmonics are important for many reasons, including the fact that different musical instruments actually sound different. In other words, they have different timbres because of the amplitudes of the various harmonics playing. Whenever any musical instrument plays even one note, many harmonics are playing simultaneously. But different instruments will have different harmonics at different amplitudes. For example, a flute playing the note G will sound different than a violin playing the same frequency of note because they have different amplitudes of the various harmonics. We can get the uh, whole concept of harmonics and how different harmonics sound by doing this. Now, on a guitar, uh, the two ends, this is called the bridge down here, this is called the nut, that holds the string down at two points and that forces nodes to occur. So here is the first harmonic, or the fundamental, if I just pluck it like that, right here are nodes, and there's an antinode right in the middle, that's called the fundamental, and I can create harmonics just by touching and releasing it. Now there's a, when I touch it there, I'm forcing a node to happen right there. So when I touch it at the exact middle, and let it go, that's called the second harmonic, or n equals two. I can also try the third harmonic by cutting into three. I only need to touch it at one of the nodes. This is a third of the way along the string between this point and this point. Right there is the third harmonic, n equals three. Next, by touching it one quarter of the way, I can create the fourth harmonic. And then I can touch it one fifth of the way, but I'm, I'm gonna touch it, sounds a little bit better if I touch it up in here, uh, but this is a node that divides it up into five pieces right here, the fifth harmonic right here. Harder to hear. And you keep going to the sixth, seventh, much harder to hear those higher ones. But those are actually all playing at the same time with different amplitudes, which gives the guitar and any other instrument its distinctive sound. What we want to do now is draw the first three harmonics for a transverse wave on a spring of length L. And for each of these, we're going to find N, and then we're going to find the wavelength for each of these. So. This is a spring of length L. When you draw the harmonics, uh, we need a way to show motion. So here's how we do it. Here's length L, that's the length of our spring. Uh, we're gonna show it in two different positions. So we're gonna show the antinode. So here is the antinode right there. Uh, that's the crest, but we also have to show the trough, but it happens at a different time. So we use a dotted line to show this 
formation is not happening all at once. First hits the crest, then it hits the trough. That's why we use a dotted line for that. So <clears throat> let's figure out the wavelength of this one. Well, it really helps to show a whole wavelength so you can figure out the wavelength. Uh, and the first thing we want to do is figure out what is n. How many antinodes are there? Well, it's obvious that n equals 1 here. There's only one antinode. What's the wavelength? I'll give you a hint. I'm going to draw the rest of this wavelength with a different color here. Notice here's the rest of the wavelength of the wave. Notice it starts there, goes to crest, trough, and then ends up back where it started. So that whole thing right there is one wavelength. What is the wavelength in terms of L? Well, the wavelength of this one, it is equal to 2 times L is the whole wavelength right there. Okay, let's go on to the next, the next harmonic. Again, we're going to draw the spring of length L right here. The next one looks like this, where there's two antinodes. So we draw that, and then we got to draw it at its different uh, time. So we draw it with a dotted line like that. So if I were doing this uh, carefully, I would try to make the antinodes the same size. That's approximately good. So this is n equals 2. There are two antinodes. It's the second harmonic. What is the wavelength? Well, if you notice that it starts here, ends there, that is a crest and a trough. That is a full wavelength right there. So for this situation, lambda is just equal to L for n equals 2. And let's do one more. For n equals 3, what's that going to look like? Well, we need three antinodes. So here's one there, one there, and one there. And again, drawing the other half of that, the, the uh, at a later time, there's a trough instead of a crest. So that right there is n equals 3. And when we figure out what the wavelength of that is, that's a little bit tougher. But notice that here is one wavelength from there to there. And that is what fraction of the whole length L? In this case, lambda is equal to 2 thirds of L. Now let's see if we can figure out the pattern. All right, so <clears throat> what is the wavelength in terms of L and N, the harmonic number? With N equals 1, lambda is 2L. With N equals 2, lambda is L. With N equals 3, lambda is 2 over 3L. I'm going to rewrite each of these just slightly different so you maybe you can see the pattern here. Uh, notice that this is the same thing as 2L over uh, 1, and this is equal to 2L over 2, and this is equal to 2L over 3. So what is the pattern that is emerging right now? Well, you could see that, and this is not something to memorize, but just, just a pattern to notice, that the wavelength of the nth harmonic is equal to 2L over N. So that's not anything to memorize, but that's just a useful pattern to note. And we'll see that in our upcoming lab.